Do you want to organize, manage, and write your blog posts in Scrivener but don't know where to start? I've created a free template where I've done most of the work for you. Now all you have to do is adjust it to suit your particular style of blogging. Hi, this is Kaz from Scrivener Quick Start, where I help you organize your projects and get more done faster using Scrivener. And in this training, I'm going to show you how you can use my Scrivener blogging template or create your own. Blogging can be pretty intensive, especially when you're trying to stick to a regular content calendar or an upload schedule. Finding good ideas is one thing, but tracking and managing all those topics and ideas right through to publication is another. Having a good roadmap helps you to work throughout the entire process more efficiently. You'll find a link to my Scrivener templates page in the description below so that you can download the template we're working on today. And you'll find instructions on the same page to upload it to your Scrivener app and add your own spin to it. If you open Scrivener from scratch, you'll see the project templates window. But if you have an existing project open, go to File, New Project. You'll find the blogging template in the Quick Start tab or the Miscellaneous tab. Open it as a new project. If you want to add the contents of the template to an existing project, if you have Merge All Windows toggled on, drag the project template off and place it above the project you want to add to. Create a blog folder inside the existing project and check whether or not your existing project has a document templates folder because you can only have one document templates folder active in a project at a time. In this case, it's called the template sheets folder. Select all the folders you want from the blogging template with the exception of the document templates folder and drag them into your blog posts folder. Then select only the sub-documents within the Document Templates folder and drag them inside the Template Sheets folder of the existing project. Then you can delete the Blog Template project. But in this case, I'll use the Blog Template as a standalone blogging project. First, let's deal with organization. Decide whether you want to post on a calendar schedule, in which case rename this document to the current year. Or by topic, in which case change the document title to the topic. If you're covering several topics, create new folders below this one and name them. And then there's a guest post folder because once you get going, people will ask you to create blog posts for them and you'll need to record their preferences. Now, if you look inside the document templates folder, you'll find a calendar schedule template for the next year. This is just a document with the months laid out. Select the previous year and go to Project, New from Template. Navigate to the calendar schedule and add it. Name it for the new year. For each blog post that you write, you're going to start with this blank blog post template. Let's add one to the design category. Go to Project, New from Template and select the blank blog template. Give it a title. and you might need to move it inside the folder above. Then let's add a template to the guest blogging folder. Back to Project, New from Template and choose the guest post template. This time we just need this for folder and then name it for the website you're going to blog for. and drag it into the guest blog folder. Now you have a roadmap of the type of things you need to research before you blog for someone else and folders for your correspondence. You still need to add a blank blog post template for your actual blog post. I'm going to show you how I write a blog post in a moment, but before I do, let's have a look at coming up with and researching ideas.
Every time you have any inspiration for a topic you could write about, open a new file for it in your blog topic ideas folder. At any time, you can create notes and research about the topic in your Scrivener editor. Once you've accumulated enough information to make this idea viable, you drag the idea into the shortlist folder. So sometime in the near future, you're going to create a post about this topic. Keep on polishing it. Bookmark links to further research or other documents so that everything you need to write the blog will follow this document. And link to the images you intend to use for the blog post so that you can find them easily when you're ready to upload to your site. To bookmark links, open your inspector menu. In Scrivener 3, open your Bookmarks tab, then open the More drop-down menu. In previous versions of Scrivener, open the Document References tab and click on the plus sign, which will also be in the top right of the window, and create your links. These could be images on an image provider's website or a folder on your hard drive where you store images you've already bought for your blog. I'll link to an image folder on my computer. Select the file or multiple files, click on Open, and Scrivener will list them in the Bookmarks tab. Anytime you open this document, your links will show up in this tab. Most blogs are about a particular niche, so whenever you do keyword research for a post, save it in one file because chances are it will pertain to some, if not all, of your other posts. Then, keep a file containing links to all the places you want to send your readers to so that they're at hand whenever you write a post. If you're running blogs about several different topics, then simply create new keyword research files and links files for each topic. This last folder is your blogging roadmap. This is the roadmap I use for writing a post. It's basically just a familiar, repeatable process you can use every time to help you prepare and schedule multiple pieces of content in advance and make it easier to write a blog post. Make sure it is open in corkboard view mode and then let's close the inspector window to give us maximum editing space. Split your screen vertically. If you're on Mac, hold down Option to convert the button to vertical. On Windows, you'll see both options. Adjust your screens so that you see one index card across in one of your screens. Place your cursor inside the second screen and open the research document for the blog post you want to write. We're going to move it into a schedule. If it's an idea for something seasonal, drag it into the appropriate month. If you're blogging by topic, you may have a list of subtopics here. Drag it into the most appropriate one. I'll rename it Colors Research so as not to confuse it with the actual blog post. While it's still selected, go to Project, New from Template and choose the blank blog template. Name it and expand it and collapse the Ideas folder to save space in the binder. Now begin to write up your blog post following the instructions in the index cards in the roadmap. Let's leave the title for now. Some people write the blog title based on their keyword research and then write about that topic, so they will already have this title. Most people add it after the post is written in case the post goes in a slightly different direction. Then the next step is to come up with as many subheadings as you can for the topic. Place your cursor inside the blog post window and select the subheading file in the binder. Replace it with your own subheading. Hit return and enter the subheading for your next idea. And so on until you have as many subheadings as you can think of. Pick subheadings at random or as you think of things to add to them and free write everything you know about that subheading. This is where you find out that some subheadings need a whole blog post of their own and some subheadings are beyond the scope of what you're talking about. Move ideas that don't belong into your ideas folder in the binder. 
Rearrange your subheadings in the most logical order in the binder. Place the most exciting info at the top to hook your reader in and don't forget to add a call to action at the bottom. This task might take hours or days. Keep selecting the overall folder in the binder to see everything you've written so far in one screen. Then just keep following the prompts in the index cards. If you see the three dots more indicator, double click inside the index card to see the scroll bar. Toggle between your instructions and your information files in this second screen. Open your keyword research and see how many of your best keywords can be inserted into your content. Your target keyword needs to appear in the post three times and in at least one subheading. Hit the skip backwards arrow in the header bar to go back to your roadmap when you want to go to the next step. Add your subheadings to the actual document or write new ones using your best keywords because we're going to merge these documents which will make their file titles in the binder disappear. Place your cursor in the blog post screen and select all the blog documents in the binder. Go to Document, Merge. And now it's starting to look more like a blog post. Do the fine editing of your entire post like spelling and grammar. If you haven't done so already, move on to your title. This is the most important element of your post, so spend some time on it. The headline has 10 seconds to get them to read the next paragraph. At the same time, it needs to have the keywords that you're hoping to rank for and still be around 60 characters or less so that Google doesn't cut half of it off. Rename your blog post in the binder. Drag the research file for this post into the same folder so that the two are always kept together for future reference. You'll be amazed at how useful this is when people post questions on your blog a couple of years later. Choose images and get them ready to publish. Then, to ensure that an image of your choice will be shown when your blog post is shared on social media, instead of Google choosing any image on the page, set an OG image of your choice. I've left a link in the research folder where you can learn all about OG tags. And that's how you get the best out of this template. I hope it helps you to organize and write your blog posts more easily and keep track of them after you've written them. In the next video, we're going to talk about video blogging or vlogging, which you might think is exactly the same as blogging, except with video. But do watch it, because keeping visitors engaged on a blog post where they can scan through the subheadings and skip to the information they want is different from keeping them engaged right to the end of a video. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next video.